Now we're going to solve an inequality. 3x plus 6 is strictly greater than 30. We're going to solve this using the same steps as if there were an equal sign there. If there were an equal sign there, this would be an equation. But there's an inequality sign, so it's an inequality. OK, we're following exactly the same steps as if we were solving an equation. 3x is greater than 24. Divide both sides by 3 in order to get 1x. There we go, that gives us 1x is greater than 24 divided by 3, which is 8. And since 1 times x is x, this will be x is greater than 8. In other words, x is going to be any number greater than 8, but not including 8, because this is a strict inequality. There's 8 on the number line. I put a parenthesis through 8 and an arrow going off to the right, just the way the inequality sign is pointing to the right. Positive infinity is on the right, negative infinity is on the left. And so here is my interval notation, just like on the number line, 8 is on the left, infinity is on the right, and I use parentheses on both ends. On the left because it's a strict inequality, and on the right because I'm using an infinity sign. Let's solve an inequality. Negative 5x minus 27 is strictly greater than 8. First, I rewrite my inequality the way it really is. Negative 5x plus negative 27 is strictly greater than 8. Then, I do just what I would do if this were an equation. I add the opposite of negative 27 to both sides of the equation. So I get 0 on the left. I'll have negative 5x plus 0 is strictly greater than 8 plus 27, which is 35. And since negative 5x plus 0 is negative 5x, I have negative 5x is strictly greater than 35. Now comes the big change. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5, which is a negative number. When I divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, I have to turn the signs around the other way. So greater than becomes less than. Now I have 1x is less than negative 7. So x is less than negative 7. OK, I write my scale on the number line. 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10. There's negative 7. I'm going to be drawing an arrow that goes to the left from negative 7, and a strict inequality takes a parenthesis. Negative infinity is on the left. I write my interval notation, negative infinity, negative 7, with parentheses on both sides. Negative, seven, uh, negative infinity is on the left, and negative 7 is on the right. So the numbers in my interval notation also have the same left-right orientation. All 
right, let's solve an inequality. 7x plus 4 is strictly greater than 5x minus 0. Well, that's kind of weird, but we can deal with it. 5x minus 0 is just 5x. So I'll have 7x plus 4 is strictly greater than 5x. Now 7x and 5x are both variable terms. I have, them, have to get them together on the left side of the inequality sign. So I do that. 5x minus 5x is 0. 7x minus 5x is 2x plus 4 is greater than 0. Now, 4 and 0 are constant terms, so I have to get them together on the right side of the inequality sign. I do that by subtracting 4 from both sides of the inequality. That leaves me with 2x is strictly greater than negative 4. I divide both sides by 2, and that gives me 1x, because 2 over 2 is 1. 1x is strictly greater than negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. So x is strictly greater than negative 2. I find a place for 0 on my number line and I write a scale. Notice that I did not have to turn my, my inequality sign around because I divided by a positive 2. It's the number you divide by. There's negative 2. I draw a parenthesis through negative 2 and an arrow pointing off to the right just the way the inequality sign is pointing to the right. Positive infinity is on the right, negative infinity is on the left, and my interval notation will look very much like the graph with negative 2 on the left and infinity on the right. And of course a strict inequality takes parentheses. Infinity and negative infinity always take a parenthesis. Let's solve an inequality. <clears throat> 8x plus 3 plus x is greater than or equal to 2 plus 4x plus 26. Let's combine like terms on each side of the uh, inequality sign before we move on. 8x plus x is 9x, and I bring down the plus 3. 2 and 26 are both constants, so I combine them. 4x plus 28. Now, 9x and 4x are both variable terms. I will combine both of those on the left. 3 and 28 are both constant terms, so I will combine them on the right. I'll subtract 4x from both sides of the equation to get my variable terms together on the left. 4x minus 4x is 0, which leaves me with 0 plus 28 on the right. 9x minus 4x is 5x, so I'll have 5x plus 3 on the left. Now I combine the 3. Ah, well wait, I am going to add 0 and 28 first just to clean up my inequality. 0 plus 28 is 28. Now I'll combine 3 and 28 by subtracting 3 from both sides of the inequality. 3 minus 3 is 0. So on the left, I'll have 5x plus 0. 
is strictly greater than up is greater than or equal to 28 minus 3 is 25. And since 5x plus 0 is 5x, I'll have 5x is greater than or equal to 25. Then I divide both sides by positive 5. So I'll have 1x is greater than or equal to 25 over 5, which is 5. x is greater than or equal to 5. Positive infinity is on the right, negative infinity is on the left, and I find a good place for 0, and I draw an appropriate scale. Now watch, I draw a bracket through 5 because this is not a strict inequality and an arrow pointing off to the right just like the inequality sign. My interval notation will look very, very similar to the, <clears throat> to the graph. Notice that infinity takes a parenthesis even when the left side takes a bracket. Let's solve an inequality. This one is different. It's a three-part inequality that gives us this interval. And it's read as x is between 9 and 20 on the number line, including 9 and including 20 in the interval. This is the way we say between in mathematics. Infinity is on the right, negative infinity is on the left, and we try to find an appropriate scale and write it beneath the hash marks on the number line. There you go. All right, 18, 19. Oh, I'm one short. Well, we'll just extend to 20. Now there's 9, and there's 20. I put a bracket at 9 and a bracket at 20, and notice the brackets are enclosing the numbers that x can equal and I connect up the two brackets. My interval notation will look a lot like the graph, with a bracket on the left and then 9 on the left, comma, 20 on the right, and then a bracket on the right. This is called a three-part interval or a three-part inequality, and it's the way we say between. Let's look at another three-part interval. x is between negative 1 and 4, including 4. 4 is included in the interval, but not negative 1. So I draw the number line with an appropriate scale and with infinity on the right and negative infinity on the left. Now I put a parenthesis through negative 1 because that has a strict inequality beside it and a bracket through positive 4 because that has uh, a non-strict inequality beside it. And notice how the parenthesis and the bracket actually enclose the numbers that x can equal. And then the interval notation looks just like the graph with a parenthesis on the left, 
a negative 1, a comma, a 4, and a bracket on the right. Now let's look at a three-part inequality that's written incorrectly. The inequality signs in this three-part interval are drawn pointing to the right. They ought to be pointed to the left. But to correct this, we're going to have to first graph what we see. All right, there's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And then on the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Notice that negative 3 should be on the left. 7 should be on the right. And x can be any number in between. Negative 3 will definitely be to the left of x, and x will be to the left of 7. So we draw our parentheses around negative 3 and 7, and we connect the two with a line. And then our interval notation will look almost exactly like the graph. Now everything's correct. Now we're going to solve a three-part inequality. 6 is less than or equal to 5x minus 4, which is less than or equal to 1. 16, rather. All right, our goal is to trap the variables between the constants. To do this, I have to move the constant negative 4 out to the ends where the constants are. So I add 4 to all three parts of this three-part inequality. What that leaves me with is 10 is less than or equal to 5x plus 0, which is less than or equal to 20. So 10 is less than or equal to 5x, which is less than or equal to 20. Now, I have to have x all by itself, so I have to divide by 5 so that I can get 1x but I have to do the same thing to all three parts of this three-part inequality. That leaves me with 2 is less than or equal to 1x is less than or equal to 4. So 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. So x can equal any number between 2 and 4, including 2, and including 4, because neither of the inequalities is a strict inequality. I'll have a bracket at 2 and a bracket at 4 and a line connecting the two of them. And the interval notation will look very much like the graph.